Hello guys, this is Jack and I am an electrical engineering and math tutor from Jack. Um, in this video, I'm going to talk about a brief discussion for the DC current. And before we talk about any electrical current, we have to define the charge, which is the electrical property of atomic particles that the matter consists of. And the unit is measured in coulomb. Recall from any chemistry class, we all know that the atomic particle consists of electron, proton, and neutron. And each electron has the value of 1.610 to negative 19 coulomb in magnitude. And this is the charge that we define here. For the current I, we define the current as the time ray of chain of the charge measure in ampere or the capital letter A. So the current I is actually the time derivative of the charge, which is the coulomb over the second. And from this definition, you can also calculate the charge transfer between any given time interval from T0 equal T by just taking the the, uh, the interval of the current with respect to the time t. So now um, we know about the charge current. We can define the DC current, which is the direct current, and the direct current is the unidirectional flow of electric charge. That means it flow in one direction all the time from left to right or right to left and the value has to remain constant with time by constant we mean um, the slope is zero if we if you think of um, it at the graph of this one and for any time t from zero to any time the current um, the graph the curve the red curve is always has a constant value. The slope is zero. Comparing to all the type of of current, we can have something like this black curve from left to right, and it can jump up and down and reverse backward. So this thing is changing all the time, and it's surely not the direct current. So the question is, how do we get uh, a DC current? We can get a DC current by something called a rectifier, which convert the AC to DC. And AC is the alternating current. And where do we get the alternating current? Um, if you look at the socket up, um, inside the wall, this socket is gener generating the AC current. Um, all the time from our electric company and uh, you have to use the rectifier to convert that to the DC if you want to get the DC to use for all the type of uh, electronic devices otherwise you can also use the battery or the power supply and battery always always generating the DC um, current. So now uh, we understand the DC current. So it's time to have an example uh, and it's used inside the circuit. So uh, for this particular circuit, you have the battery or the voltage supply here, 24 volts. And um, it's connecting to the switch. At time t equals zero, the switch will be closed so that the circuit becomes a closed loop in which the charge can flow inside the circuit. And we insert an ammeter to measure the current later as the time goes by. And this circuit has the two resistor connecting here, 12 ohm, and then this one, 6 ohm, and this 
uh, this six ohm we also connecting to a capacitor plate which has the value of a thousand microfarad. So the question is, what is the current inside the circuit after a long time? After the time we close the switch, for example, like two minutes later, uh, five minutes later. So initially, when you close the switch, the charge start flowing from the battery here from left to right and to this point to this knot it will go down here and start accumulating on the capacitor place so we can think of um, this as uh, something with positive charge um, on one side and then negative charge on the other side as the charge is flowing down here and then eventually at some point later um, the the potential difference between the capacitor plate is equal to the voltage supply 24 volt so that this plane become um, a open circuit that means the electric charge only flow to this 12 ohm but not anymore to this print so eventually we have something like this right 24 volt and 12 ohm here so using the ohm law v go ir you can find the current equal 24 volt over 12 ohm and this is equal to m for the current and this is the steady current um, or the DC current after a while, after a long time, after the switch is closed. And yeah, that's the result of the DC current in this circuit um, being used um, after the switch is closed. So with this, we conclude the video. So thanks for watching.